forward to doing this class right now. It's on medical qigong therapy. And at the end, I'm going to give everybody five cool different things that they can do to protect their mind and their energy in our times right now. So interesting enough, now it's uh, playing on my uh, laptop here after going through that. So looking forward to this class today. So medical qigong therapy, our medical qigong is a separate practice from qigong. Um, you have four main schools of qigong, which are medical qigong as the, being the oldest. You have martial qigong, you have spiritual forms of qigong, and in some uh, lineages they have like the scholarly qigong. The difference between the spiritual and the scholarly is the spiritual's idea is to try to reach enlightenment, is where the scholarly is trying to reach like the exuberant health. You're not necessarily trying to become enlightened like a, you know, a monk or a monastic monk. You're just trying to use it to uh, become your healthiest and best. So today we're gonna go over the other specific type of medical qigong that is used to treat people. And there's a lot of good clues in this for this type of practice for Reiki practitioners, for people that work with, uh, with people, massage therapist, uh, or anyone that's in close quarters with people, or let's just face it in society, the way that we can protect our energy when we're going through stores. And we can also, the ways that we can protect our, our mind from being bombarded by you know, negative news all the time and all the fear and pandemonia that's in our world right now. So through understanding how you set up a medical Qigong clinic and practice and what you need to do will give you lots of clues for all the different energy medicines in the world. Now medical Qigong being the oldest documented energy system in the world and some scholars would say it was really the first one that was formulated because when you learn the medical system and how to understand the body you are then able to take that knowledge and apply it to martial arts. Or you learn the medical system and then you were able to take that knowledge and you were apply it to meditation and breathing techniques and uh, nei gong. There's a lot of uh, misused words out there and nei gong and wei gong is probably the biggest one. So qi gong is a fairly new term. Uh, the older term was called dao yin or xin qi, uh, leading and guiding the energy. And so you have Dao Yin or you have Qigong and within those practices, within Qigong is the Nei Gong systems, which is the internal systems. So I would say 99 out of 100 people practice Qigong by doing movements and maybe they're doing some nice deep breathing. But the Nei Gong of Qigong would be where's the tongue? What is the anal sphincter and vaginal gate doing? What is the breathing pattern? Is it in, hold, out, hold? Is it in through the nose, out through the mouth? And these other details is what you would need to know and understand the Nei Gong of Qigong. So in medical Qigong, we have what's called a general protocol. And what I'll do is I'll do some flashes on the screen. And then if you guys wanna take that and type it out, or if you're really, really interested, then you can go ahead and email me. I'll leave my email at the end of this class. And uh, I'm gonna upload these videos because this will be our organic dragon show moving forward into the future. I'm gonna start doing more events like this and I look forward to passing on some of this information and knowledge to you guys. Okay, so how you start off with the medical Qigong system and knowledge is the most important. So we always start with what's called the 18 rules of posture. So in order to have the best flow of energy, to have the, the best mindset, the clearest perceptions, you have to be able to understand how to get into the proper alignment of your body. And again, you know, I don't want to down other systems, but I see a lot of people out there practicing, you know, Tai Chi, Qigong, and really everyone should start with these 18 rules of posture. So if you're interested in those, you get an intro to those in any of our course introductions in all three of our courses, whether it's the artist, the adept, or the scholar, you'll understand how to do the 18 rules of posture. The next thing you're gonna do is you're going to do what we call the one through 10 meditation. So there's, an, there's a physical structure that you learn, 
and the next structure is an energetic structure that you learn in order how to get your energy in line within your physical frame. So the physical body is like your bone stacking, your muscles, tendons, and ligaments, and how they align, where your, where your shoulders are, your elbows, your knees, your hips, your chin should be tucked, your head should be up. And then your internal energy structure is like, one is fun and you feel this melting, two is shoe, your feet melting, ground into the earth, three is tree, roots come down, four is core, you bring that up and over, five is alive, that expands through your system. Six is thick, it fills the room. Seven is heaven, it comes down into the cord and roots in your body. Eight is gate, it expands. Nine is shine, it expands even further into the way chi fields. And then 10 is begin, we're going to go ahead and begin the treatment. And then what's really, really important is what we call, you know, how to claim the space or how to create the environment in order to do energy work. And again, this would apply to acupuncturists, Reiki people, massage therapists, and anyone that works with the body in any capacity. So the three invocations invoke three distinct principles. The first one is I ask, now the, you can use your different words, and again, if you're interested, we have a course coming up that I'll talk about at the end. So the first one is kind of asking the divine presence or divine truth to root down into my body and center in the core of my body. So then the ego and the I as JC no longer exists. I, I learned to tap into this universal principle of energy flowing through my body. The next principle is, is claiming the space, is saying that only divine truth, that only love and light and energy can become in this presence. Now this is something that's in all traditions. It's kind of like in magic where they cast a circle and they say only divine light or truth can enter this space. And it's the real beauty of medical Qigong when you go through these trainings is you learn how powerful your voice is. And when you have a faith, when you have any faith, it doesn't matter if you're Christian, you're a Buddha, you believe in Allah, you, whatever you believe, the stronger your faith and the stronger the convictions of your words and that makes it so. So when you guys are out there, the first thing that you can do is protect yourself is just by making the claim, the authority of your voice alone is just as powerful as any pastor, just as powerful as any minister or anybody in the world. If you say that only divine light and truth can enter this space, so be it. So therefore it was. And that's a universal principle. So the second invocation, we learn how to envelop the room and we claim this space of healing so no negative energy can come into this space. And then the third invocation is now we want to bring down this energy, bring it through our body, and we want to envelop our patient in this energy cocoon. And what this does is very important. It allows the subtle energy bodies to slowly relax and let go. So without that, if you just lay someone on the table and you don't develop, envelop their body in a protective energy bubble, that you could say they're on guard, their first way chi field, this guardian energy is still slightly on guard. Uh, I always like to look around at other studies and a, a study would be is like when you go and you sleep in an unfamiliar place, you know, you don't sleep really well and that's because your body is slightly still on guard. It's kind of like you're sleeping with one eye open because you're just not familiar with the place and therefore you're still on guard. So until you envelop someone in this energy bubble as a third vocation, their energy system, their first way chi field that is still kind of like, you know, um, unpenetratable for the most part. Uh, and that can also factor in the more physical someone grew up. So the example I always give, if someone grew up with a lot of brothers and sisters, and let's say they do a lot of construction and they're a very physical person, uh, when they come for an energy treatment, you know, you can't always dip into their energy because it's still just too protective. So the three invocations is the first thing that you want to learn how to do. And the more you do them, of course, the quicker you can get into them. The next thing we do is we want to create a vortex. Now, this is a very important for, uh, again, other energy people because, you know, uh, I know some systems believe like in there's this like universal energy, but in medical Qigong, we either send energy or we draw energy off. We might make it hot. We might make it cold. We might add a vibration. We might add a healing sound to it. We might use invisible needles to put in there. We, we have all kinds of energy techniques that we have used. And if you can only imagine that these techniques have been used for 
thousands of years. So it's not a new made up system and it's still the most advanced system because people aren't familiar with it yet. And so I like to joke and say, well, you know, Kung Fu was a big secret when it came to the West initially in the 60s and 70s. But the biggest Chinese secrets of all have always been the medical Qigong, way more secretive and way more powerful than any of the Kung Fu and any of the martial arts systems that were secret at one time. Uh, but we see this growing in the last few years. You know, all of our medical Qigong classes have, you know, started off with a few people and got up to 30 people in some of the classes, you know, in the last year or two. So uh, now that we're going to be moving to more online platforms, maybe that will reach to, you know, thousands of people or hundred thousands of people one day. So this next concept is called vortexing. We, again, now some terms are going to be out there for some of you guys, but you know, other you guys can figure it out. So we would, we would make a cord from their soul star through their body, like wrapping in like a coil or a cocoon all the way down into the earth star. And we would start this big vortex and we would drop this vortex right down into the floor, right underneath the table. So then the next level is clearing their three-way chi field. So as I grab their energy and throw it, I always want to throw the bad energy into this energy vortex that moves down into the earth. Because if not, if I just pull it off and I leave it in the room, then, you know, then I have to deal with it that way or other people can be exposed to it. So I always want to grab and I want to learn to throw off this negative energy into the room. Uh, and this is an important per, uh, part of doing the training at first because let's say you have a client that's driving across town. They get into your room and you know maybe someone cut them off in traffic so they're all in their head. They just watch the news and they're all in their head. Well, I don't want to diagnose that. So I'm going to clear their thought forms. I'm going to clear some of these other things that are in their auras for some of you guys might be familiar with that term, but we call them Wei Chi fields. So I want to clear this off first so then when I dip into their energy and I diagnose their organs, and I'm gonna show you guys how to do that, then I can get a clear reading of what's underneath the surface. And so this is important. So we call this vortexing and then dredging the three-way chi fields. And already at this level, you're giving someone an energy treatment and you're giving someone a treatment that you know most people have never had in their life. And whatever you got going on in your life, you got other people in trying to, you know, put things in your head you got the news bombarding you with all this you know negative media then the first thing you can do is you can make someone feel really clear-headed and really light and refreshed just by doing that alone the next thing that we do is we energize the taiji pole so you know the taiji pole basically runs down through the top of your head what we call the ball way down to the the bottom of your spine the way in and it's like this hole that runs down through us. And this is why we want to have a good vertical alignment. So this energy that runs down through us. Now in the West, we are getting more familiar with like chakras. Um, but in medical Qigong, we kind of laugh at that in a sense that in a way, if your alignment to your connection to the source is way more important than what your independent chakras are doing. And then before the chakras, we have what's called the dantins. You have these three dantins, elixir fields, and they're kind of in between the realm of physical energy and energy. So in the system, you should worry about your alignment first, then you learn about your lower dantin, your middle dantin, your upper dantin, and then later in the systems, you learn and how to work and how to strengthen and work with chakras. Now, even in medical Qigong, we take chakras to a whole nother level that most people might not be familiar with. They're familiar with, they think of the chakras as these orbs. And in fact, they're like these spirals that spiral out of our Taiji pole. So the light of the chakra might be big, but the chakra itself is really, really small. It's inside this pole and they spiral out. And so later we're learned to like diagnose these, actually pull them out of someone's body, open them up and dig down into these vortexes, clean them out, throw that into our vortex, and then learn how to reseat the chakras and place them back in the body. So the first thing that we do is we use our sword finger and we send energy down through the Tai Chi pole to energize that Tai Chi pole. So, you know, science does explain, well, why do we feel better when we're in, in environments like in front of the ocean or way up in the mountains? For the simple fact that when there's more negative ions, which are good for us, more negative ions in the air, then that pole, like that antenna, is more conducive and so more energy flows down through our body and a finer energy. So then we have higher evolutionary 
thoughts. We, we think more positive, more optimistic. We have like uh, ideas of inventions in the future and things of this nature when we connect to this source. And in medical Qigong, we say there's three levels of medicine and the highest level of medicine is to help someone find their life purpose. The second level of medicine is to help someone live every day a little bit more virtuous and more positive. And then the third level of medicine is to treat physical disease. Um, as you may have experienced in your life at some point, when you feeling really good or you're doing something and your mind's occupied, you might not feel that pain that you have in your elbow or your knee or your back, all of a sudden you don't feel the back pain and then when you come back down, you're like, oh, I feel it again. So the idea is if you can get someone to live in these, this life purpose zone or this virtuous state of being then daily aches and pains go away and again as we treat the whole body we take into consideration someone's physical body physical age um, lifestyle is very important well you know you can have two people the same age but one guy grew up as a construction worker and one grew up in the office they're going to have different physical uh, issues that might arise over a period of time uh, also different upbringings, depending on where you grew up in the United States or out of the country, or what belief systems that your, your family had, um, what religion that you were involved in as a child. When you start to look at people this way, you really can learn to let go of why people are Republican or Democrat or this or that. It's all based on where you were born and your upbringing. So this is very important because in medical Qigong, your love of people and your ability to work on yourself is how go good that you're going to be in the future. So there's a kind of like a joke that says, you know, you can be the best brain surgeon in the world, but be like a, an a-hole on the golf course. But in medical Qigong, you will only become as good as, the, you, as you become morally correct and righteous for yourself. So you always have to work on yourself and that's what's always I loved about it is because it always gives me something to work on. If I want to be really good at medical Qigong doctor, then I got to constantly work on my own virtuous living and my own health. So in another class, I'll explain to you the whole idea when people talk about energy vampires and things of that nature. Medical Qigong actually explains that very well because whoever has the strongest, let's say, liver in the room of a group full of people, that liver energy is automatically tuning up everyone else. Whoever has the strongest kidney energy in the room will naturally start to tune everyone else. So if you have really good kidney energy and one of your best friends has really weak kidney energy and they're in your presence, well then they're gonna absorb some of your energy and then they might leave feeling great and you might feel leave a little bit down. So we take that very serious in medical Qigong with the idea being is I gotta be so exuberantly healthy and powerful, it's kind of funny, that just you being in my presence, you're basically getting the healing. And definitely, when you come into my office, I gotta be a glowing, radiant health person with exuberant and positive mind and health and virtues. So maybe a little bit of that can rub off you and that's part of the, the treatment. So after we energize the pole, and I know I'm kind of bouncing around, you guys can watch this over. Uh, the idea is not to really show you exactly how to do it, but to show you all these cool concepts that are in medical Qigong. And they, again, they've been around for thousands of years. And now if I take any one of these concepts, I could take the time and almost explain it to you on a scientific level. Because when we say, oh, science hasn't caught up with you know, uh, proving acupuncture or science hasn't caught up with, you know, showing the, the heart has a, you know, a frequency, a, a, like a electrical vibration that spreads about, you know, 15 to 50 feet around you. The truth is science has caught up and it's been around actually since the 70s, but the mainstream media just hasn't allowed you guys to see that. But if you do your research, uh, Professor Jerry Allen Johnson, or you follow the Medical Qigong College or Institute, you can find where these studies have been done and have been proven for a long time. So science caught up a long time ago. It's time for all of us to catch up now. So the next thing after we, we energize the Tai Chi pole, we come and we put our hands over our ears 
and we push energy down into the kidneys. The kidneys are kind of like the master of your physical energy, and so with this, we want the kidneys to expand the, the whole body and make all the organs just a little bit stronger, just for a moment. So that way, as I come in and I use my fan palm diagnosing, then I can feel the energy. Now, some people might be familiar with using their, their hands to scan over, and they might feel, let's say, cold spots. That would be, you know, one. But medical Qigong uses what they call the eight sensations. So each organ system and each part of the body can di be diagnosed with the eight sensations. And to give you an example, the liver. So I, if I put my hand over someone's liver, the, the eight sensations would be, is it hot or cold? What kind of sensation am I feeling? From the, most livers are hot, so I'm gonna feel like this heat, more likely. Okay, so I'm gonna feel heat. And then I'm going to feel, is it excess or deficient? Most livers are excessive, so that's gonna normally make my hand kind of rise away. If it's deficient, it's going to draw in. And then I'm gonna say, okay, is this, is this excess of deficiency? Is this hot or cold? Is this coming from internal conflicts? Like is someone angry at the world? They're angry with their self? You know, the shoulda, couldas, and wouldas, that's what my teacher used to always say. Um, or is this environmental? Are they living in like an apartment with mold in the wall? Are they uh, working as a hairdresser and they're exposed to chemicals all the time? So I can actually pick up where these conditions are coming from external or internal and then I can then I can is the is it yin or yang to its original nature now that takes a, a higher level of uh, degree of diagnosing because you have to work on enough bodies in order to know what a truly healthy liver actually feels like so we go through and we we fan palm hand each organ system the liver the lungs the large intestine or all the organ systems the small intestine the gallbladder the bladder the kidneys you, you get the idea. We, we go through the entire body and we learn to diagnose that body just with energy. Now, in addition to our uh, treatments, you also learn to do it in a couple other ways. So we learn to use observation. So we look at the tongue, uh, we read the pulses, uh, we look at the color of their skin, we look at their eyes, we, how do they smell? Well, what does their posture look like? What is their, is their voice? Is it too weak or is it too strong? We actually have uh, a complexity of different ways to diagnose, inverted or extroverted structures. We also use uh, a, a Yao system, which is really cool. Uh, hopefully once you see this, you can never unsee it, but where does reflexology come from? We've all heard of reflexology in the hands and the bottom of the feet. Well, it comes from the Chinese system. If you take the body from the, the stomach up and you divide the body into six sections, six of these sections, well, those six sections are on your hand. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. And so if you have digestive problems in your gut down here, well, on your hand here in this lower section is where you would treat, you can treat people. And same with your foot. So it's where reflexology came out of. It's called the Yao's. And this is another system that we use. So if someone does have digestive problems, I don't necessarily need to go in there and start, you know, rubbing around and doing some tui na massage in their stomach. I can actually just treat their hand or I can treat the bottom of their foot and I can do the same thing. So uh, medical Qigong has a host of systems, the five element, the Bagua, the eight triagram systems, the observation systems. We also learn to develop kinetic feeling. Like I feel something in my body or learn to develop empathic conditions or perceptions, and that's through the emotions, and learn to develop intuitive perceptions. So sometimes I, you know, I know what's going on with people before I even, they even come into my office, I already know what's going on with them. And then when I do all these energy scans and pulse readings and tongue diagnosis and, you know, looking at their body and listen to their conditions, I already know what's going on. So medical Qigong later, has exercises how to develop the kinetic, the empathic, and the intuitive abilities. So this is just some of the, the energetic complexities that you will only find in medical Qigong. And that's why to me it's the most beautiful system in the world and it's very, very, very advanced. And I'm only scratching the surface on how deep some of the energy things go. And of course when I got into this, 
you know, I already had 10 years of studying with the Grand Master learning Qigong for myself. So when I went through the college, which took me 10 years from 2008 to 2018, and learn all these advanced things, of course, I've always been a skeptic myself, but I've had enough, I've worked on, you know, over 500 people, you know, 800 hours in the last, you know, since uh, 2008. And so, you know, you couldn't convince me that it isn't real anymore because I've seen it, I've done it, I've had the feedback, I've had people get over ailments, and I've worked on people in every single condition. Like, you can never surprise me with a condition. I don't hear how gross it is, all the way up to, you know, uh, stage five cancer, stage fours. I mean, I've worked on everything and I've helped people on every single level. So it works on everything. So after we, we do the energizing of the kidneys, then we go through and we work on individual organs. Now to give you an example, I'll just give you, I'll just show you how, let's say complex the lung could be. So I might feel the lung as an exit deficient, as an internal, external, as a hot or cold, and then I might, you know, use my fingers to open the channel and I'd grab the arm and I'd open it up. I'd move the energy and I'd pull the arm and then I would open this up. I might use some pressure points, lung number 10, to see if there's some stagnation there, or lung number one or lung number two, to see if those are sensitive. So in some cases I do use a little bit of touch. Uh, I used to use it more when I was kind of learning, but now I basically I don't need it as much. Um, and then I might, you know, put my hand underneath the shoulder blade and lift the shoulder up and roll the energy out as I'm rolling the lung through the lung and grab the energy. And of course, grabbing all that energy, which what gets trapped in the lungs is sadness, grief, and loss. So able to, to tell that and even able to tell, is it the, you know, is it the mother or the father? And so I've worked on people and then I can, you know, feel this and this, you know, when the treatment's done, you know, that's the main issue was, well, how is your uh, relationship with your father or your mother? And usually the answer is like, oh, I don't talk to them anymore. You know, they, you know, I got into a fight with them five years ago and I was like, okay, well, you have asthma, you have lung uh, conditions or maybe even digestion because they're associated with the lungs. And you can keep taking the enzymes, and you can keep taking the inhalers, you can keep doing all these things for your asthma, but until you go back and you forgive, and you do the forgiveness prayer, and you do some work on forgiving your mother or your father, you're gonna carry that condition around with you your whole life. So we say that there's treating the disease and there's treating the people. And so you, you have this two-way fence with that. Sometimes you can cure the disease, but you don't cure the person. And this is especially true in cancer. That's why most cancers sometimes will come back in six months. Because if it was this, you know, these other issues like anger and these other things that make someone mad, then they can do all these things. They can get themselves healthy, but then that anger just eats them up. And again, you, know, you might have heard that anger causes cancer, not necessarily, but becomes a feeding source. So it keeps the body acidic and it, and it does feed the, the cancer like an entity. And I don't want to go into the cancer therapy because that's, medical Qigong master and doctor levels. And so we're only talking about, uh, there's four levels. There's a practitioner, there's a therapist, there's the master, and then there's the doctor. So we're just kind of covering the levels of the practitioner. So you can see, you know, if I went into more detail in theory that they can get very complex. And then the other time is that you can treat the person and they can get rid of all their problems. They can get rid of that anger. They can get rid of that depression and sadness but they waited too long so the disease at that time is going to, you know, going to take them. So the idea is Qigong is great to help people do this, but it's even better as a preventative healthcare system and not only for treating people, but also the medical Qigong system where you're learning to treat yourself. And so there's two different systems though. You know, very few people about know about the medical Qigong system for themselves because you have a lot of these schools now they're appearing and they're basically turning qigong into yoga they're, they're turning qigong into movement into a dance which it, it can be but that's very very superficial qigong and I, and I do see people out there claiming to be masters and doctors and you know doing qigong and basically all they're doing is dancing until you start explaining tongue until you start playing attributes until you start explaining the lower gates you start explaining the intentions and what organ system it is, how you're stretching the sinew channel and open the meridian and what you're cleansing and what secondary organs you're working on, then you're just doing superficial Qigong. 
So hopefully if you're really interested, then we have all our courses that will be launched in the next week or two, and they'll be online courses, and you can really further your energy medicine skills moving much further. So now once I've cleared the lung, then what I need to do is I need to go in there and tonify it. So in medical Qigong, you always have these three concepts, purge, tonify, and regulate. And this would be the first thing that's going on with a lot of people practicing Qigong. If you just go right into practicing cultivating energy, well, let's say you have some anger, you have some sadness, you have some worry, then as you cultivate energy, what you're going to do is you're going to exaggerate that anger. You might feel good for the moment, but you're going to exaggerate that depression. So the idea is I first need to purge that out. Um, or like a, a visual example would be is you have a, a, a half a, a cup full of dirty water and you just start adding more fresh water onto it. When we get to a full cup, it's just murky water. It's, so medical Qigong, you gotta pour all the water out first. You gotta get all the purging done first. Now the cup is empty, now the organs are cleared, now you're ready to cultivate energy into your body. You got to get rid of the anger. You got to punch it out. You got to get rid of all this frustration that's going on with us in our world before we're ready to truly cultivate serenity and trust and inner peace, um, patience, and you know, and and uh, self knowledge and wisdom. So we got to we got to dislodge the negative emotions or what we like to acquire the or say the acquired emotions. And so, you know, with that concept goes the idea, if you keep working on your good stuff, you're never going to get to heaven is kind of the understanding in Qigong. Because when you're born, you're born a virtuous, perfect being. And throughout a lifetime, you acquire. So when you're born as a baby, you don't have any worries. You don't have any regrets. You don't have any fears. You're not angry at anything yet. So all these, what we would call negative emotions, are acquired throughout a lifetime. But if I, if I just keep working on my righteousness, on my good stuff, well, I still got that worry and that regret and that fear that I'm holding on to. So in medical Qigong, the path to ascension is to work on your negative stuff. Because what's underneath all these masks and all these acquired feelings are our true, beautiful, virtuous nature that we're all born with. So after we purge the lung, then we need to tonify it. We need to fill it with beautiful white light, integrity, dignity, and courage. And that's like a vibration. Now, I can't pass on to you the vibration kinetically of courage and integrity and dignity. I'm getting chills saying that. If I don't have that myself. Because I got to think of what gives me courage and the things in my life that have given me courage I got to bring that up like a vibration, like a homeopathic vibration, so then I can pass that on to you. It's like, a, it's like a mentor or it's like a teacher. You can't teach something that you don't really do yourself. And you can see when people do that, their teachings lie flat. Or they, you know, that you, you learn it and you think you heard it, but it don't stick. But when someone's really passed on to you, we call it an avaseka, when someone's really passed on to you what they live through and what they encompass, then you're less likely to ever forget it because that's called the transmission. They're giving it to you that way. Passing on this frequency and this vibration into your body. So after we've gone through and we've done all the internal organs, then what's really left then is the last thing that we always want to do. Now there's secondary protocols and we have these for headaches, for anything you can name. So for uh, not just cancer, but all the different types of cancer, for digestion, Bell's palsy, whatever it may be, there's these secondary protocols that we go through. Some of them include, like the one for headaches is really, it feels great even without a headache because it's like a facial massage. You learn to clear out the gallbladder channel and you pull this heat off the head and you pull this heat off around the top of the head. Uh, you massage the eyes, you move the energy along the trigeminal nerve, and you move all this energy out, and you know the person doesn't have headaches anymore. Uh, and then they also don't have the monkey mind or the tiger mind. And so these are what we'd call secondary protocols, and you learn those. And then when those are done, we then we're always going to cycle the energy through what we call the microcosmic orbit and the fire path. 
And so we learn to take a little bit of their energy down in their gut and we, you know, we follow it like a pearl up their governing channel, down the conception channel, up the back and down the front. And this is final, that final third stage of what we call regulation. So we purge, we tonify, and we regulate. Sounds normally purge, sounds and vibration shaking, purge and dislodge, you know, stuck energy and stuck meridians and emotions. We tonify with colors and visualizations and affirmations, you know, that rebuild the tissue. So now it's been cleansed, it can be rebuilt and, and maintained. And then the final process is regulating the energy through the body. And there's different Qigong practices, the eight manifestations of energy, um, or there's the microcosmic orbit, or sometimes just uh, sitting, sitting or standing, uh, being quiet and deep seated meditation will help the energy regulate. It goes to where it needs to go. And there's different ways to explain that. And uh, you know, I'll see how you guys do, um, you know, if you have questions, so I had to modify a little bit. I was gonna do it on my laptop and then I was gonna be able to answer questions and then my browser, you know, is not allowing me on there. So I had to do it on my phone. So I'm a little bit further away, a little bit different format that I wanted to do. But look forward to the Organic Dragon Show because it's gonna be a weekly thing and then you can bounce over to YouTube and you're gonna be able to watch this anytime, uh, upload it over to YouTube. And so this is going to get better and better and I'm gonna keep moving forward with this moving forward. So thank you guys out there liking that uh, and then the last part would be is we can have the patient sit up now these these last parts are really also important in energy medicine uh, because when you treat someone you treat their physical body you treat their emotional body and you treat their spiritual body and these are linked to what we would call those three-way chi fields so after i've got someone on the table i've done the guided meditation i got them in this beautiful space and then I sit them up and I wanna seal that into their physical tissue. I wanna lock that energy into their first Wei Chi field. And then I wanna seal that into their emotional body, into their second Wei Chi field, like their second aura. It, and normally at this time, it's about you know five to 10 feet around their body. And then I wanna seal the energy into their third Wei Chi field and lock in like the, you could say the spiritual experience into their body. And now they've gotten this whole treatment on a body mind you know spirit level and i got it all sealed in and they should be you know at their best at this moment uh, then it's very important to um, return the energy when we return the energy uh, i want to excuse me i want to cut the cords with them so we use the 12 chakra gates as you you make these little cords with people and you make these with your patients so we do like these things we cut the bottom chakra gate we cut each chakra of the five front gates we cut the the top chakra gate and the five down the back so you actually have 12 chakra gates you know front and back for the third eye the throat the heart the solar plexus uh, the abdominal and the and then the root chakra comes down and the crown chakra goes up so you have 12 gates that we cut uh, we say your energy is your energy my energy is my energy through all timelines and dimensions so we learn how to disconnect um, and then we then after we do that then we we go ahead and we can pull off, feel like we have gloves on, we can throw it into like our vortex. Uh, and then finally we go ahead and seal up that vortex. And then the patient is disconnected from our energies um, and I'm disconnected from them. And when you get really good at this, uh, I would say a sign is that, you know, do you think about your patients or do they, you know, if you're really good at disconnecting from your patients, I wouldn't say we forget about you, but we definitely don't stay attached to you. So, you know, the idea is that it's kind of like the old, like these sayings is we're, we're trying to, we want to get you to the level of that you can fish for yourself. We don't want to keep doing this for you, you know? So that way in medical Qigong, it's cool because the prescriptions are usually, if you have lung issues, then the prescription might be a lung Qigong exercise that you do every day you know, for 10 minutes and you open up the lungs a little bit more than you normally would do and you do this breathing and this affirmations. So the prescriptions are cool because they're actually Qigong movements. Or if you're like someone like me, master herbalist, and you might prescribe some herbs, you might recommend some dietary changes, uh, you might also recommend lifestyle changes, you know, someone's been in a relationship and they just, it's abusive. 
So you might gently recommend, you know, moving on from that relationship, moving on to the next job because the job is unfulfilling. So you're really looking at each, each person as a, a complete person and everyone's different. You know, 10 people can come in with a stomach ache, but I'm gonna treat each person completely different than the other person based on everything from their blood type to their posture to their body type to their, their lifestyle to you know where they grew up their mental belief systems um, you know and I'm gonna figure all this out you know within our, our hour of, of time or a good portion of it um, and then you know we save a little bit of time to what we call outtake and that's you know talking to our patient setting up the next um, time and so the next course that's starting in June 19 is the medical Qigong therapist. And you learn that. You learn how to set up a clinic. What are the, what's the paperwork involved that you need to you know, have? And you give to your patients the intake forms. How to create an environment that is protective so you protect yourself. How to treat people. How to uh, practice yourself to make yourself stronger. How to go out to nature and how to recognize the mountains and what directions you should face and how to you know practice and cultivate at the highest level using all these different modalities that I went over and then then just like a regular doctor you know we wash your hands before and really good and we wash your hands afterwards and um, you know so this is what it takes to do a medical Qigong treatment and again it's a different system than medical Qigong self-practice and um, it's a different system than basic Qigong, which is if someone is just moving and they're going, yeah, this is you know good for your body because you're moving and this is Qigong, it's different than that. It's a lot more complex and it can get a lot more advanced. Um, and then in the martial systems, you learn to use isometrics and you know deep stances to strengthen the tendons and ligaments. We also have the iron body training coming up here in the next couple weeks too that will be starting online. And that's a different system that includes different nei gong, different tongue positions, different breathing patterns, uh, reverse breathing, uh, and a whole different system. So look forward to those coming up. And this last part I wanna go over with you guys is, like I said, five things that you can use right now to learn to protect your energy. And one of the uh, most powerful ones that we've learned to, to say every single night is what we call the command statement. Okay, so I'm gonna do a close up. You guys can see that, you can always pause that. And again, if you can't get it that way, send me an email and I'll <laughs> send it to you. Um, but the command statement, basically every one of us, every single day, is breaking some vow, commitment, our contract that in our lives. So a super subtle example would be is, do you drive, you signed a license that said you would abide by all the laws. If you speed over that speed limit, you're basically breaking a contract and a vow that you sign yourself. Uh, so this statement is helps remove any vows, commitments, contracts that you've made in the past that no longer serve your highest purpose. And it dissolves these cords. And so yeah, one little commitment, you say I'll go there and you didn't, yeah, one little hole in the ship is not. But when you got a bunch of little holes in your ship, you got all these little energy drains all over your body, then that will start to tax you in the long run. So this is, I command any thought forms I created consciously or unconsciously are implied by me or anyone else that no longer serve my highest purpose to be dissolved and resolved into the light. And then you can do the clap if you want. It's one here, one here, one here, one below. And so it's five claps, one above, one below, and three for the Dantins. Now you don't need that clap, but that command statement is very, very powerful. Now you can make up your own. I dissolve and resolve any vows, commitments, contracts by me, either consciously or unconsciously, that no longer serve my highest purpose to be dissolved and resolved back into the light or back into divine truth or whatever you want to say there. Very, very powerful statement that you can make. Okay, 
So that's the first level of energy protection. Again, like I said at the beginning of this, do not underestimate the power of your own voice and your own conviction. If you say only divine light and truth can enter this space, then that is the truth. And the more conviction, the more faith you have in yourself, the more faith that you have in whatever you believe, then the more truth that those words become. Okay? Now, now one way to enhance that, if you're like, now I went through a 10-year ordination. I got an Abbaseka from a real grand master that I trained with for 20 years. I have a lot of conviction in my words. Um, you know, I went through a 10-year Buddhist and Taoist priest training program. You know, I did 108 full body prostrations. And through ceremony is how your words become more powerful. Now, I understand that not all of us can get there, but one way you can do it for yourself is just go online and go into the Universal Life Church or one of those self-ordinations and just self-ordain yourself. So when, you, when you're an ordained minister, you get a little bit more legal protection. It's probably the way going forward for most of you guys out there teaching. You know, Oprah and uh, Dr. Oz, you know, those are all, they're, they're all ordained ministers, and that's what gives them a little bit more authority to not be sued because they're kind of telling you this information. So you can go and you can ordain yourself. Or again, if you really got that really good conviction, then you don't need any self-ordainedness. You don't need any religion. That's the other beautiful thing about medical Qigong is medical Qigong teaches you how to go and connect right with the universal source. Whatever you believe that in, to be God, uh, universal truth, universal light, righteousness, there doesn't need to be anyone in the middle between you and the ultimate source. In fact, when you make that connection to the ultimate source, anyone getting in between that is just a filter and actually kind of slowing down the, your reception. So this one beautiful thing I like about medical Qigong for me anyways, is I've always been you know, a person that believes in God, but I haven't been a religious person. So I believe in, there's a higher power of truth, justice, and, you know, and goodness. And so when I learned in medical Qigong how to make that connection, then you know, I just use that connection in everything I do. I don't need any religion or pastor or anyone in between me and the source. It's beautiful. Okay, now then the next way to protect yourself is actually pretty simple is called the radiant bubble and all it does is take your visualization because we know colors have frequency and we know you know they've, they've proven this uh, you know even back when I was a bad boy in school they you know, built these walls of pink walls and blue walls and they would put you in there and that was supposed to calm you you know Dashi always said that the martial arts schools were painted red because you know red has more energy and it, it does now medical Qigong you learn exercises how to how to basically see in the ultraviolet levels of light and how to see in the uh, infrared levels of light low to high frequencies uh, so you know colors are very powerful western science has done you know tests with uh, petri dishes and cells and you know put colors over the cells and watch their their you know their their change their oscillations change in their cells so we know colors affect our body and so the first one, the radiant pearl, is you just visualize like a beautiful white light right around your body, just like in this first way chi field right at the surface of your body. And then the second one from there to about three to five feet around you is a nice blue. And then from that blue, from that three to five feet to you know 15 feet or more, you see a beautiful red energy. And that, you could say it's like a frequency. And so let's just say, viruses and bacteria negative thoughts they have these frequencies and when you're low that's when they can penetrate through I've I've done these drawings for people to show you how you know your other your friends that come into your field they start to creep in and when you're low energy their thought forms can come in and penetrate into your mind so this first level is just this visualization of colors around you to kind of you know enhance that vibration that's around you um, and on that level, you can say, you know, using stones is good. You know, you have some stones, you have organite, uh, you know, that might be the future. People used to, you know, not be so interested in that, but now that might be the wave of the future, you know, having these radiation protectors on your phone or in your pocket, you know, to protect yourself against all these electromagnetic fields and negative, you know, thought fields that are out there, like the fear of vibration, the more the, the masses vibrate fear the more vibration of fear is in our you know in our earth field and so 
It's one thing that you can contribute, just like the masters have always said, if you really wanna still make change to this day, then stop worrying about everything that's going on in the world and work on yourself. That's still the greatest way to make change. Why? Well, maybe you don't think that you're reaching those people because you're not doing your Facebook and you're not saying how angry you are. But when you make the change within yourself and you go out somewhere and then that vibration carries over to the next person, they go to the next person, they go to the next person. Well, you know, the, the law of leadership says that the, even the most introverted person in a lifetime will influence over 10,000 people. And so if you're out there in the world, you're going to influence people, you know, all around the world all the time. Now, if you are, you know, doing positive things, then of course, be that person, be that person online and promote positivity and, you know, and optimistic, you know, maybe the world's changing for, for better right now. And it's like the, the circle, of the yin and yang at the top of the yin and yang, the black gets really thick and really heavy, but that's usually right before it's going to, it's going to change and turn into something brighter and better in our world. So stay positive out there, spiritual warriors, and use these things to protect yourself. Okay, now the, the next one, which is the third level of protection, is really, really powerful. And some of you guys might be familiar with, like, I think it's called the Hopopono, or I don't think I said it right, but like this idea of this forgiveness prayer. And so this is one of the most powerful things. Again, I'm not going to show you guys this too much because this comes out of the book. Uh, the forgiveness prayer is from... Uh, a book from a, a cry from the womb by Gwendolyn Jones and the idea is that this removes um, vows curses magic and so the the idea is I'll, I'll say it for you so I ask the healing work be done for you name the person that you want to forgive usually it's your parents first or it's the the old boyfriend or girlfriend that broke your heart or it's the old you know, bully in school that, you know, left a lasting impression you still think about today. So this forgiveness prayer is the ultimate practice as far as getting back to wholesomeness, to who you really are, you know, not holding on to grudges and things of the past, you know, because that's only affecting you at this point. You know, that person maybe that bullied you has long forgotten you and you're still holding on to it, or maybe that ex has moved on, or that boss that yelled at you, you know, they all moved on, and you're the one that's holding on to it. So as we, as I forgive you for whatever happened between us in this lifetime or any other, I ask that you forgive me for whatever happened between us in this lifetime and any other. I ask that, now here you can, you can interchange with what you believe in. You can put God, Christ, or Mary, or you can say sword of truth and clarity, or you can say Buddha or Allah or divine truth. Uh, my guides, my teachers, my angels, you know, forgive me. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. So this is the idea is this forgiveness prayer is usually one of the most powerful things that I give my clients afterwards because I say, well, you know, you know, that those, you know, those father issues, you know, they, uh, you know, he moved away when you were a young child and, you know, he abandoned you and, you know, and now you have that abandonment, acknowledgement trapped in your lungs and you've developed asthma and you develop upper respiratory problems uh, because you've been holding on to that. And so, you know, people come in and, you know, I'll tell them something like this and sometimes people are like, no, everything was good. And then say, okay, well, just think about it. And then a, like a week or two later, I get an email. It's like, well, yeah, the more I thought about what you said, the more I realized that I was holding on to this resentment for, you know, my biological father or mother and you know this is I went through this myself so I know that it's real you know and I was one of those people like no there was nothing there but there was and you know I've been very fortunate to have you know a great stepdad that's become my dad and other things in my life but I know this stuff works and so the forgiveness prayer is extremely powerful for you removing these things from the past that are stuck in our life now the other one and we're getting close to being right on time here. The other last two are uh, one of the first ones that Grandmaster Ba taught us was um, what he would call the cocoon. And he kind of would say it to us, you know, that we're going through the spiritual worry training. He's like, are you guys sleeping? Are you waking up? Are you sleeping? And you're waking up, you know, the next day and you're feeling tired. And he's like, well, you're probably doing some work. So he taught us just to go like this and feel like you're emitting energy out of your fingertips. I know it might seem kind of funny, 
but you're just wrapping yourself like a butterfly. You're wrapping yourself in this cocoon. And you do this before you go to sleep, or you do this before you meditate, and it's just kind of sealing your energy, and it's, it's holding your space, and that cocoon is protecting you from any of these outside influences that are going on. So it seems really simple, but it's very powerful. Now in medical Qigong, we do an advanced one called the Radiant Pearl, where you learn to bring out this pearl and you spiral it down counterclockwise down to your earth star and clockwise up to your soul star and then back down counterclockwise and you make this like really intricate cocoon and then you allow that to fill up and this will really protect you from other people's energies and thought forms when you're sleeping or you're in meditation and so that's the five and then, you know, one of the, the most advanced ones we do is called the Renrozong, where you learn to invoke these animal, these shamanistic animals around you, and they kind of, you know, will protect you. And I'm going to post a link to that because I have that as a digital product. It's only $1.99, but it helps support us. And it's a really cool, elaborate visualization. It's a video, you can watch it, but the idea is that you let it play and you close your eyes and you do it and you keep doing it until it becomes a part of you. And so those are my, you know, five energetic protections. Uh, watch what you say because your words are like magic. Everything you say that you will attract it. So I know it's a little difficult in times right now, but stick with positive words. Give yourself positive affirmations. Wake up in the morning. You feel great. Stay on the creative process. As long as you're creating and putting new content out there, then you're moving forward and you're helping people. So keep creating, that's what we're meant to do, is we're meant to create, we're meant to utilize and use, manifest these energies. And um, I'll go back and look through the questions. If you guys have any questions, you know, I'll go back through and answer those. I'll upload this, this whole video to our uh, Organic Dragon YouTube, and you can watch it there again. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, it was a pleasure, and I will be doing these weekly moving forward on different topics. So thank you so much, and we'll see you guys again real soon.